The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International.
Jesus. Come on, come on, thank him and praise him. Hallelujah, it is done, it is done, it is done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, it's the year of fulfillment. Hallelujah,
cast my mind to Calvary when Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all
praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could only be at one place this morning. This happens, must be the River Tampa Bay Church. I, I've never in my life been in a place like this. Father, on this 1,360th day of the stand, as you've helped us, as you've graced us, as you've equipped us, as you've carried us and sustained us, if we stand here today and we worship you, we are overwhelmed by your goodness and grace and kindness to us. The very fact that we're still here is only because of your goodness and grace. Every last one of us. And I pray that you will touch and bless each and every person here today. Lord, you know exactly what they need. Those that are watching by way of television, that you would reach into their homes, that you would touch them, that you would fill them, that every burden would be lifted today. Every bondage will be broken. Every yoke shall be destroyed today. That even today, people be saved, healed, delivered, set free. That you would take control of this service. By conclusion of this meeting, we'll say truly the hand of the Lord was among us. And the good shepherd walked among us. And he came and put oil on our heads and touched us and we sat at the banquet table and we ate of the heavenly bread and we drank of the living water and we drank of the new wine and we received what we needed for the week ahead. That even now, whatever the enemy was planning for this next week is neutralized in Jesus' name. Pull the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots even now. And this week shall be a great week of victory for your people. And we thank you for it now and we give you praise and we give you honor and glory for you alone are worthy to receive all glory and all honor and all praise. Let's do our bless your name. I bless your name. We bless his name.
their chains were loosed and they were free. I bless your name. sense his presence this morning. 
Just say this out loud. I'm not leaving here. The same I came. In Jesus' name. I've come to receive from heaven all that heaven has for me today. And when I leave this place, I will have everything I need for this next week. Now lift your hands and give him praise. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to turn and greet two or three people. Tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. Thanks to the orchestra, and the singers, the band, and everyone. If you're visiting with us, I'm the pastor here, and just want to warn you, uh, this service might not be for you. <laughs> Somebody said, why? Because this is tailor-made for the River Church. So some things I'm going to be sharing here today, you might not even understand, but if you stick around, you will. But you might wonder, I wonder what they're doing right now. Trust me, this is River stuff we're dealing with today. Amen. And uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm glad to be here. If the Lord hadn't spared me this last week, I might not have been here. And I'll just make mention, I won't mention which dealership or whatever, but we had to have the camber changed on the Zio for racing. And uh, I raced Friday, bust the record, went to 123.7. Wait. So then Friday mor Saturday morning, yesterday I had to take a bunch of people out, which obviously people want to go for rides. And when Pastor Josh pulled it onto me, he said, Pastor, something's wrong with this car. So what do you mean? He said, well, it, when you turn it, 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 it knocks. It makes a noise. He said, I'm going back to the shop. I'm going to check it out. Well, out of the eight bolts that to be bolted, seven were loose on the canvas. So that meant I could lose control at 134 miles down the thing and spin out of control. So I'm going to do something about that. Uh, they're going to get a legal letter from us this week. But the Lord spared me greatly. Now, somebody said, but pastor, why do you have to go at that speed? Look, I have nothing to do with this. I didn't even want to call it. I ended up getting it, and then they built this track. But I do pray, I do pray, and thank God for the anointing on Pastor Josh. I mean, he heard it. He knew something was wrong. And uh, anyway, all of my passengers were happy. I delivered them safe and sound. Amen. There's nothing like a thrill of high speed and stuff you're not allowed to do on the I-75. <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy to be here today, and we're going to give away a car today. Because I started talking about it, then I felt the Lord say, well, just start getting the car. So I got one, I got another one for next Sunday. And then I just felt I'm going to give one away a week. And... Uh, starts today. It's related to the message I'm preaching. Somebody said, what is that? It's a river thing. It's a river thing. And possibly I'm going to extend it into April. So even the four Sundays I'm gone, we'll have a car giveaway each Sunday. So you pray with me, because I have to bleed this stuff in amongst all the other stuff. But I'm really excited about this one. Should we do it now? <laughs> Pastor Eric's going to come. Tell him what it is, Pastor Eric. 
We found this. This is such a great vehicle. This, this is an immaculate one-owner vehicle. It's a Volkswagen Passat with 25,000 miles on it. It's, uh, and that's a great engine, great motor. It's a 2020. It's, it's amazing. We have two sets of keys. You have a backup spare right here. So Pastor's got two sets of keys, and we have somebody in here. Now, who, whose car is this? Now, I think we've given away, what, 45? Yeah. 45 yeah. cars? So this takes us to 46. So should we do a, a drum roll? Somebody give me a drum roll. Let me just turn it around. All right, Janetta Prieto. Come on down. Come on. She's stuck to her seat. I don't think the mic's on. It's on. They can't hear. It's test. Yeah. What? What? You? 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 You prophesied some. What is it? That's my God. Ooh, that's my God. Yeah, it is. So here's the keys. Take her out. Pass Eric Walker out. Help her. Okay, ushers. No drinking and driving. No drinking and driving in the. But this is drunk in the Holy Ghost. Pick her up, guys. You gotta, you gotta come get your car now. You gotta, you gotta let the, you have the unction to function. So walk with me. Yay! Oh boy, that's a nice looking vehicle. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> Look at this. Come on down. Beauty. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh my. Oh, oh, Daddy. Oh Lord. Oh, you're so good. Well, let's go ahead and crank it up. Real quick. Um, crank it up real quick. Oh. Oh. Keep it oh neutral. Am I doing it right? As she's cranking it up, let's look at this beautiful vehicle. Wow. She's got to figure out how to do it. Okay. Well, we'll teach you how to do it. Push the button. But anyways, we'll just walk around it real quick. Just come on out and walk around it. What, what do you think? I mean, you're overwhelmed, but look at us. Just walk around for a second. Were you believing for a car? Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, actually a week, I, um, when we were in service, listening to the stewardship message, and I'm like, I'm giving my car away. I'm sewing my car. <laughs> and Lord, you're going to give me a new one because he told me that he was going to give me a car. And I put my name in, and I was going in there, and the guy, somebody else was talking. I joined in a conversation, and I said, I said, oh, how do you have the car? Because I have the keys. And he said, really? I said, I said yeah, I do. I didn't have the keys yet. But I was just speaking it. But when I was going, I looked at a car and I saw myself in it today. Well, well you're in it today. Somebody give God praise. That's awesome. Well, hop back in it.
Don't forget, on the way out, Land of the Light, of course, Operation Eden, we make all this available for you. And then KBF Tuesday, Tony's going to continue part four on marketing, which has been, I believe, last week was a home run. People loved everything, so this week's going to be great. Tonight, by the way, uh, Pastor Alan hasn't been speaking at the stand for the longest time because all the youth, so he's going to speak tonight, and it's going to be great. Un unfortunately, I have to go to Mississippi. We start tonight in Hattiesburg, almost just under 1,000 registered there already. Then we go to Jackson, Mississippi, Monday night, Yazoo City, Tuesday, Tupelo, Wednesday, South Haven, Thursday, and Memphis on Friday, and then we'll be back. Also, Healing School starts tomorrow, the next session, so please, you can still register through tonight for tomorrow's session. Very important that you do that, very important. And then, of course, we have the wonderful Ladies' Conference coming up. Already 3,747 pre-registered ladies. It's going to be awesome. Let's roll the clip for the Ladies' Conference. You know, it's just not a one-touch, one experience, but it's pressing in. You're going to leave changed. You're going to leave different. It's not going to evaporate. It's not going to leave you. Some of you, he's going to start something in you. Some of you, he's going to continue what he's done. Some of you, he's going to take you to another level. Just let God do what he wants to do. But you need to make yourself available and I need to make myself available. And together, the will of God is done. Just one person gets hungry, it'll overflow to many lives. And of course, we are one month away today of leaving for Africa for seven countries and uh, believing God for great. There's so much momentum picking up just on the registrations on what they call Click It, which you book. It's like a ticket. You go online. There's 79,480 people already registered. But remember, it's three nights, so we mobilizing so we can pack the stadium for three nights. And um, there's so much excitement on the ground. Just all the reports coming in from the pastors and just everything. They believe this is the time. It's one month before the national elections in Southern Africa, and the country's standing on the brink of total anarchy in more ways than you can ever imagine. So um, I believe this is very, very critical. Let's roll the clip for Cape Town, please. Fires just spread out across Southern Africa. The devil will not have South Africa. Now the church is rising in great power and anointing with signs and wonders and miracles. South Africa belongs to Jesus. Cape Town's going to be saved. Cape Town's going to be shaken by the hand of God. I see an army of men and women full of the fire of God marching through the land. God is not done with this country. He's not finished with South Africa. And he's not finished with the South African people. God's not finished yet. And then roll the Africa clip because there are six other countries we're going to. Roll that so you can see where we're going. The Lord said to me, run to the nations. I came to light a fire. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, 
You're going to win souls and you're going to bring in the harvest of souls. You have to get the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got to plant on the inside of you. So we're going to see the harvest coming. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not going to have my country. You're not going to have my nation. The whole of Africa is going to be shaken by the hand of God. I see Africa ablaze. plan for April and um, some things are going to happen here but uh, you'll be hearing from us every week um, <clears throat> then after that of course we get back within one month is the graduation of River University I mean it's like I can't believe can you believe this year is accelerated to what it is we'll be having Thanksgiving next week it's like, <laughs> it's just like Somebody, anybody want a turkey? Like, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Anyway, then the ministers and leaders conference, they throw that. is coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Then two other things I need to make mention, which I didn't. March the 31st, Sunday, Big East Outreach, huge. I believe in God, just like the, you know, the service before Christmas, we had over 5,000 people on the place, 1,500 saved. We believe in God for massive harvest that Sunday, big, going to be big. And then don't forget the River Car Show is this next week, which is going to be great. Many people have been saved through what's happening with the car show. We use every method to catch fish. Right out of the Ministers and Leaders Conference, we'll go into Summer School of Evangelism. Six weeks, we will be training everybody from one-on-one -on -one evangelism all the way to Mass Crusade. So it's going to be awesome. People are coming from everywhere to be trained for that. So let's roll the clip for Summer School of Evangelism. When I'm going to take this word, I'm going to put it in me. They could drop me anywhere in the world. Somebody's gonna catch fire. We can't keep this fire to ourselves. 
We're gonna get this fire out to everybody. We'll put the fire on you, and let me tell you what's gonna come out of you is gonna be something that's beautiful, that God is gonna use in a powerful way to touch the lives of many people. And when I find other people just like me, I'm gonna say, swing yourself, come. We're gonna smack this thing together. We're gonna do it together. You don't understand what's been burst on the inside. You don't understand what took place. I'm gonna shout it. I'm gonna shout it. Then right after that, of course, we got London. Now we're busy working on London already. Pastor Eric actually is gonna make a trip over in a few weeks' time for pastors and leaders meeting just to pull things together. Let's run the London clip, please. God's not through with the United Kingdom. He's not through with you. God will shake London, England. But somebody with the fire will go in there and then there will be a shaking that will take place. We'll stand there right in the heart of London and we're going to issue a decree. I see an army of men and women full of the fire of God marching through the land. You're going to break through in England. You're going to break through in the United Kingdom. London's burning, burning with the supernatural fire of the Holy Ghost. So I know people say, Pastor, if you're doing that all now, what are you doing the second half of the year? Really, unless the Lord speaks anything to me, I mean, we're just really focused on America. That's why we're hitting six cities now. I would squeeze another six in before I leave for Africa, but uh, my wife, <laughs> she'll loosen the bolts on the car. No, I'm, te I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. It's a joke. It's a joke, a bad joke. It's a bad joke. Bad pastor, bad pastor. But <laughs> she said, no, you're not doing, you're not doing another meeting. Yes, dear. Amen. Well, she's looking after me, which is important. Amen. Aren't you glad she looks after me? Okay. All right. And then, of course, which you can't see right now, but it is happening. And more is happening behind the scenes. There's what's happening in front of the scenes, but it shall be done the new atrium that we are putting in place with the new elevators that are coming and just everything that's going to be done around these parts. And the Lord already gave me, listen to this, which I spoke a little bit to Pastor Alan about it, but God gave me a solution for the youth facility, children facility, before we even build the whole big one. I already got it. We already know what to do. So that's going to happen as well at the time, same time we do this next phase which is going to be off the chain. So roll the next phase, if you can do that for me, please. So it's enclosed from elevator to elevator. It's going to look like a lobby of a seven-star resort hotel, I promise you. And just everything that's going to be in there, it's much wider than you can imagine. It runs right up with a 20-foot road between the pavilion and the sanctuary. So it's huge. And of course, with the elevators, you won't need to do the River Stairmaster every Sunday morning. So this will be the next phase that's taking place. No deadlines publicly, but a lot of deadlines privately. <laughs> and uh, if it's not done, certain bolts will be removed. <laughs> it's a joke. 
Anyway, that's going to be great, especially when it rains here. How I many know when it rains here, it rains? We have monsoon they never told us about. Anyway, praise God. Well, I think we've got some testimonies. <laughs> Pastor Ryan. Oh, hallelujah. Good morning, River Church. What a great week we've had this final week in February. The total, we had uh, 4,177 souls coming out of here in Tampa over the phones, the different ways. How many soul winners do we have in the house today? Amen. It's going to be another great week of souls. If you would come up here, Miss Rachel, she has a great uh, testimony about soul winning this last week. So tell us what the Lord did. Um, so I was out soul winning and we were door knocking and um, knocked on the door the, the first time and nobody answered. And so I, I knocked again even louder, even harder. And um, this lady answered the door and she comes to the door and she's like, I'm just a deaf, blind old lady. And in my heart, I was like, well, that's that's about to change. And so in the beginning, I had to repeat myself several times throughout the script. And I was like, you know, I got to the part where it says, so if you would like to receive the, the free gift that God has for you today, say this after me. And um, she was like, oh, yes, like, oh, yes, I want to I wanna receive. And so um, she said the prayer. She gave her life to Jesus. And, um, and then she was, she was just crying and crying. And so then I said, you know, it says in the Bible that, that Jesus, um, he healed the sick, he cleansed the lepers, he raised the dead, he gave sight to the blind, and, and he made, you know, deaf ears open. And I said, it also says that those who believe shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I believe I can lay my hands on you right now and you, you will be able to see and you will hear. Everything will change. And um, she's, she looked at me and she's like, like, really? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, do you believe that? And... Um, She's like, yes, like, I don't, I don't want to be blind anymore. Like, I want to see, I want to hear. And so I just laid my hands on her head, and, um, and I just commanded the thing to come out. And then I said, I said, all right, Carol, take your glasses off. Like, tell me what you see. And she said um, that when I, when I was praying that uh, she saw a light um, come into her eyes. And I said, well, tell me what you see. And uh, she said, well, I see your teeth, and, and you have, you know, you got long hair. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, and, then, and then I felt led to just ask her, is there anything else you want me to, to pray for? And she said, well, I, I have depression, and I don't, I don't want to be um, depressed anymore. And I said, well, he can, he can take care of that and give you the joy. And I was like, okay, I'm going to pray for you again. And, um, and so then I just commanded the thing to come out again. And, and then I was like, all right, Carol, like, laugh, like, smile, like, laugh. And she's like, I haven't laughed in so long. And I just kept screaming, like, joy, like, joy. And, and she just started laughing and, and um, crying. She was laughing and crying. And, and um, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and then she told me, she's like, she's like, like God sent me, sent you here because I was feeling really hopeless and I just was having an extremely bad day and she's like, now I have hope. And um, so praise God. Um, the, I just want to encourage everybody, the, the harvest is ripe and, and you are the laborer. You know, people are crying out for help and hope and, and you have the solution. You, you are the hope because Christ, Christ is in you. Hallelujah. What a joy to populate heaven and plunder hell. Amen. Jamar, come on up here. Another great soul winning testimony. Crazy weekend for you, but tell us what the Lord did. Good morning, church. So this past Thursday night, I was walking, and for my job, I deliver replacement phones. And so I was on the way to my last appointment. I was on the phone with my mom, and um, she was telling me how my dad has been dealing with a sickness and it didn't get any better. So this really upset me. You know, I, I just thought to myself, like, who does the devil think he is? You know, he has absolutely no right to have a place in my household. And so it just came out of my spirit, I'm going to pray for the sick. Now, I'm on the clock walking, so I can't just, like, you know, stop walking and go pray for the sick. But at my next appointment, my next client is this old lady. And so she has Parkinson's disease. So for five years, her hands are always violently shaking. And... For five years, she's had arthritis in her knees and in her back. She hasn't been able to walk without a cane. She hasn't been able to turn around. She hasn't been able to stand up without pain in her back. And so I was talking to her, I told her, hey, God loves you. He has a wonderful plan for her life. She gives her life to the Lord, amen. And then I told her, not only does God have the gift of salvation, but the gift of healing as well for you. And so I told her, Jesus died on the cross 
The Son of God is manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. You know, so pain is not your portion. You don't have to live with this pain. And so I told him, I'm going to pray for you. When I pray for you, God's going to heal you. He's going to take away all your pain. I said, do you believe that? She said, yes. So I grabbed her hands, and I started praying for her. And as I'm praying for her, the shaking goes away. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And so faith is action. Faith is now, you know, hitting school impartation. Hallelujah. And so I told her, stand up. And so we stood up. I started walking for a little bit, holding her hands, and then I let her hands go. And I said, walk, walk in Jesus' name. And so she started walking around with no cane for five years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. For five years, she hasn't been able to turn around without a cane. She hasn't been able to stand up straight without pain in her back. The shaking in her hands was gone. No more shaking. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, glory to God, she said the favorite thing that she was excited about, she thought she was just getting a new phone, but God gave her a meal call. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the favorite thing she was excited about was that she was going to be able to tell her little grandbabies and hold them without shaking in her hands anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, I thought my night was over. I was on a high, hallelujah, powerful meal like I've ever seen. And then 30 minutes later, I'm on my way home, and I get in a major car wreck. Like, my car is completely totaled, smashed. And it was so bad that the guy who hit me thought that I was dead. But God. But God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I actually got out of my car, and I helped him get out of his car. And after I, you know, I helped him get out, and I said, Hey, man, has anyone told you God loves you? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And so I told him, I said, has anyone ever told you God loves you, has a wonderful plan for your life? He says, yeah, I was actually coming from a Bible study. I said, fancy that. And so... <laughs> And then, you know, I prayed for him. I asked him, if you were to die this night, you know, do you have without a shadow of a doubt, you would go to heaven. Now, everybody knows after a car accident, when you nearly die, most people would be like, you know, they have a heightened sense of eternity yeah. in that sense, <laughs> right? And so he said, no, he didn't know for sure. And so I prayed with him. He gave his life to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I asked him if he had any pain. So I, I was bleeding. I was bleeding in my face after this, like, blood falling out, you know, should be dead. And I asked him, do you have any pain in your body? He says he has pain in his knee. I said, well, guess what? God not only has salvation, he has a gift of healing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I prayed for his knee. God healed him. He said his knee is more significantly better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so... I just want to encourage you all today, be bold, be fearless, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Signs and wonders follow those who believe. Those who know the God shall be exploits. I should be dead, but God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Powerful. And then come on up here, Mr. Marvin. Miss Brenda came to healing school these last two weeks. Actually, two weeks ago today, they were saying, uh, when they were telling me the testimony earlier, two weeks ago today, they came to church here only for the second time and hadn't heard of healing school. And then pastor announced healing school starts tomorrow, and they signed up. So they just finished the healing school class. Tell us uh, what the Lord did for you these last two weeks. Yes, two weeks ago today, our first time in this church, we learned during the announcements that there was a healing school here that started tomorrow. I looked at my wife and I said, I can't believe this. We had just come out of our church. Uh, I had gotten a very bad report from my primary doctor about a recent blood sample taken that uh, indicated that some of my organs were shutting down. <clears throat> and he says, this is serious. Of course it is. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I needed to hear that. So he says... Um, First, we got we got to do an MRI first. We got to find out what's going on here. So, 
do it quickly. I did. A couple of days later, uh, the results came back, and he calls me, and he says that you have a blockage in your bio duct and a small mass in the same area. Well, I didn't even know where the bio duct was. It was somewhere in here. So he says, you're going to have to see a gastro doctor, and he's going to have to perform a procedure called the endoscopy. Uh, to repair that, uh, okay, I'll do it. So I went through that, I won't go into the details of that, but I had the procedure done, and they inserted a stent in that area, and they took a biopsy of everything. And finally I went home. Two or three days later, the doctor calls again, says we've got the results of the biopsy, and we can't find anything. It's clean, clear. I said, great, that's wonderful. Well, but here comes the but, that we don't think we got enough sample. So we want you to come back and we want you to do the whole thing over again. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do it, doctor. You told me that you found nothing and I received that. I said, my wife and I are Christians. I told him that. He says, well, how about a second opinion? So anyway, we eventually we did get a second opinion. <clears throat> All my medical records were sent to that group of doctors, Jewish doctors. And he calls me and says that, um, you know, we think we agree with the first doctor. You need to go back there and do this thing. I said, listen, doctors, all of you, <laughs> my, my wife and I are Christians, and we believe in divine healing. I said, my God, my God is big enough and greater is he that is he that is in me. I said, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. And I said, that's good enough for me. I said, we actually don't need to talk anymore after this. <laughs> and I did. And that's when I told my wife, and we had gone to churches uh, previously, even like three weeks ago and two months before that, where I'm taking my own oil to the church and trying to find an elder to pray over me, which it didn't work. So that's whenever I told my wife, uh, two weeks ago this morning, we got to go to a different church. So I gave her two names. One of them was the river. And she says, the river. I said, okay, we're going to the river. And that's when I learned that there's a healing school. It starts tomorrow. I said, you know what? Before I got home that day, I was already registered, which she did on her phone online. So the following day, if, you were in pain in your oh, I had all kinds of symptoms. I won't go, in, go into them. They're gruesome. You don't need to hear about them. But <laughs> I went to Henning School. After the first day, um, we were marinated in the Word and praise and worship. When we got home, I told my wife, something is changing. I can't tell you what it is. I don't know. Second day, it was a one-on-one. -on -one with another pastor that in this room and <laughs> in the corner over there. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that, but we were seated facing each other and she actually had a bottle of oil. And I was telling her, I'm, I didn't have to bring my own oil this time. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna lay hands on me. She actually believes in James 5, 14 and 15. And she did. She anointed me. We went through some other stuff in my early life. Got that out of the way. She put her hands on me. She prayed over me. And it was like rolling thunder. <laughs> when that was, for that second day, back to class. Back to class, same thing again. Come home, something's happening. I don't know what it is, I tell her. Third day, third day, the symptoms begin to soften. Maybe one disappeared, maybe two, I don't know. Fourth day, symptoms began to disappear. The fifth day, which was the first week of school, they were all gone. All, all. And, and the second week, which was sort of like the downhill part, because it was glorious. It was just 
saturating in the word uh, all day long. Uh, this is like warp speed happening. So if you need healing in your body, take the fast track and get, in, get into the healing school. You won't have to do what I did. It works. I am healed and here to stay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Healing school starts tomorrow. You can still register by midnight tonight. Come and be healed in the presence of God. Amen. And then, Mr. Engardo, how many know we've entered the time of heaps, as Pastor said? Tell us. And this is the year of the fulfillment of the personal promises of God to you. Amen. Tell us what the Lord's done for you accelerating your business this year. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Montones. Heaps. Well, this is what it is. Um, thank you, Pastor. Um, Pastor Ronnie, Pastor Adonica, thank you for everything. Um, my wife and I, we are starting the business, um, handyman services. We're doing a little bit of everything. But also, um, in the first two months of this year, it's been crazy. This is a crazy place. <laughs> this is a crazy church. I already made, for the glory of God, what it took me seven months last year to make this year. I mean, crazy, 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 crazy. I had to stop advertising because I cannot handle the work. Unbelievable. So anyway, we are very busy. We're doing a lot of work. We are making money. Thank you, Jesus. And it's been everything Pastor been saying. It's, 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 it's fast, fast, moving, moving, fast, fast. Whatever thank you, whatever thank you to do in three years, you're gonna do in six months. That's what has been happening. So it's been so fast that my wife, she did um, real estate licenses not even a month ago. And by the, end of the, by the end of this month, she already gonna do her first closing. She don't even speak English. But that's okay, we don't need to speak English. This is the language we need to speak. Crazy. Also, um, I had a guy that, that texted me on Monday. This is crazy. This is a guy that texted me on last Monday. His name is Paul. He goes, hey, sir, I can see you had uh, advertising and you're still doing handyman work. I said, yes. Okay, I'm not in the state of Florida right now. I'm in Michigan doing something, but I want you to go to my house. Uh, I need to pressure wash the house and I need, I need you to paint my house. And I go, okay. This sounds nice, like a scam to me, you know? <laughs> but I had that feeling like, it looks like a scam, but I had that feeling like I had to go to that house. It was like five minutes from here. So I told the guy, listen, I'm not around, but I'll be there Thursday. I can go over to your house. So I went over there Thursday. I text the guy, Mr. Paul. And I go, hey, I'm on my way to your house um, to do the quote. He said, okay, great. So I went over there. And I look at the house, uh, this house doesn't need any paint. This house is being complete painted. But I went there and I knocked the door, the door. This guy came out and I go, are you Mr. Paul? He said, no, I'm not Mr. Paul. Uh, this is your address? Yeah, this is my address. Are you looking for someone to paint your house? I said, no, I don't need no one to paint my house. And I told him, listen, I got the text right here. Mr. Paul is texting me, he needs this house paint. And then he look at my shirt that say handyman service, and I know he start really like, anyway, uh, you do handyman work? Yeah, that's what I do. Anyway, I got a job here to do. Do you want to do it? <laughs> of course I want to do it. I'm here to work. <laughs> so what the devil tried to do to steal my money, because it's a scam, so I was texting the guy, even I was doing the job there, and I text the guy like, I told the guy, hey, watch this. I'm going to get him a quote. What's going to happen? So I told the guy, oh, this is going to be like $3,000, right? And he goes, okay, how do you receive payments? And I go, well, I take sale, I take cash, paper, EBT, whatever. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we take whatever. We change it, you know? And then um, he go, can you send me your bank account number so I can transfer the money? I said, man, this is a scam. So it was a scam. I ended up doing a job. And the last thing that I wrote, I, I changed his name. And I put here, Mr. Scam. And this is what I wrote to him. Hey, sir. I don't know who you are. I don't really care. I can say this to you. You are full of the devil. You are trying to steal people money. And this is what happened. I went there, I did a joke, I made money. And the devil is using you very powerful. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ give you whatever you deserve. Went into a scam and got hired on the spot. I'm telling you, the Lord will turn around a scam in your favor in Jesus' name. <laughs> there are many prayer requests coming in from Manhattan, New York, Bloomfield, Connecticut, Newport Beach, California, Silver Springs, Maryland, all the way from Canada, Boston, Massachusetts. There's a number on the screen. You can call it, and we'll be praying over them before we go off the air. Well... I felt the Lord begin to speak to me the last couple of weeks about something. And I was reflecting back on the years, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and 2024. And the Lord said to me, what was significant that happened in 2021? I said, well, Lord, it was the Sunday that I stood on the field and I, because we were going through the Bible to get everything ready for, to put the first Bible out, I'd gone through all the passages of Scripture on sowing and reaping, and there was a passage of Scripture that I had read, but I never used publicly. And that would give way to the whole teaching on heaps, which when I pulled all the videos, we actually have 56 messages over the last almost three years that's related to blessing heaps, double heaps and all that kind of stuff. So I started going through it and I actually was shocked because I realized in the month of March, I didn't really focus much on it. We just did the offering or we talked about it and everybody grabbed it. And then I was impressed by the, 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 the whole feeling was when you remember when the lockdown came and I had that word from the Lord, the jar meal will not fail, the oil will not run dry. And then I kept telling everybody it's still in effect. And the Lord said to me, well, heaps are still in effect. So I said, okay, yeah, but if I, if I just get up and talk about it, people are going to... He said, no, there's many new people. There's new people watching, and people need to grab it at a foundational level to understand what I'm actually doing here. So I felt to con concentrate the whole month of March just on heaps. Because, because of what the Lord wants to do in and through every one of your lives. A lady today just got blessed with a heap of car. So, and, and there'll be many other cars now that over the next eight weeks. And, but there's things that God wants to do in the life of each and every person here. This is, now maybe it doesn't mean anything to somebody who comes from another church because you don't even understand the language. Tune out, go somewhere else. I am the pastor here, and I have to do what the Lord's told me to do along these lines, and you'll understand it. So I'm going to take us back for about six minutes. To the 28th day of February, 2021, on the field. Let's roll it. The word works. I said the word works. Now, I've been through the Bible three times, and I've been going through all the stewardship teachings. We're putting together a stewardship Bible that should be out by October. But I found this passage of Scripture that I've really been meditating on here the last week. And it's a passage that I never actually used ever before. I want you to go to Second Chronicles 31. And I want to go to verse 4. 
Moreover, he commanded the people that dwell at Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. As soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel, listen to this, listen to this now. They brought in abundance the first fruits. Everybody say first fruits. Of corn, wine, oil, and honey, and all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things they brought in abundantly. So it says here, the tithe of holy things, they were consecrated to the Lord and laid them by heaps. Now, everybody say heaps. In the third month, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps. So there was so much that a lay a foundation. And they finished it in the seventh month. By the seventh month, they finished with the heaps. Now watch this now. When Hezekiah and the princes came and they saw the heap, they, <laughs> they blessed the Lord and the people of Israel. And Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites. What's going on, you guys? And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered him, and they said, listen, listen, get ready, get ready. Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we've had enough to eat and have left plenty, for the Lord has blessed his people, and that which is left is a great store. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Not only shall you be blessed, not only will there be increase that will come on your life, but everyone around about you, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, your friends, your family, your loved ones, they shall all be blessed. And there shall be heaps and heap upon heap and upon heap. And there shall be increase that shall come under those whose hearts are perfect before the Lord and those whose hearts are pure. And the Lord shall shower down and rain down upon you his good treasure and the blessing of the Lord shall overtake you to where you're blessed on this side and you're blessed on that side and you're blessed over here and you're blessed over there and you're blessed everywhere. You cannot commit your life 100% to God and commit yourself 100% to the Word and become a tither and a giver and a sower of seed and be a soul winner and win souls and not be blessed. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. Possible! God's word is true. He doesn't lie. If he said it, it's for a reason. For all you that would say that's under the old covenant. If that was like that under the old covenant, how much more? How much more? How much more? Under the new covenant? How much more? Under the new covenant? Based upon better promises signed and sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to grab it in your spirit. You have to say this in your spirit. If there's nobody else on this field that grabs a hold of it, I'm grabbing a hold of it here today. As the psalmist said, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Just stand quickly, lift your hands, let's pray. We believe in God for the new balconies in the auditorium, and we believe in God to put a covering over this place and renovate everything here. We're going to pay cash for it. I'm going to get a train that will run to the children's church. Many things are going to happen, but it's going to be epic, and all of this well, the balconies will be done this year, and many other things are going to happen, and we're going to pay cash for it. When Dr. Ron Phillips was here back about 2006 and 7, he stood on the platform and said, listen, he said, the day will come when people will come from all over just to see the cars. No, 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 this is big. The flood is here. It's not coming. The flood is here. I said the flood is here. I said the flood is here. It's all for a purpose. Yeah. God empowering each and every person for a purpose to bring in the end time harvest. You know, this car show is going to bring many people to Jesus that will never come to church. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, I'm just going to speak it out. There are going to be people pulling up here with Rolls Royces. People are going to pull up here. I'll just say, people pull up here in a Bugatti Veyron. You know, God's going to make signs and wonders out of you people. Yeah. 
agree. Because you put souls number one. I said you put souls number one. And we are not going to apologize because they've called us the laughing church for years. You know what they're going to call us now? The very wealthy, extreme church where the billionaires go. Does that mean we don't want poor people? The poor people are welcome here, but you ain't staying poor. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a tombstone out at the front gate. With my, say, here lies Rodney R. Brown, who doesn't care anything about anybody's opinion. And he stopped caring when the fire of God hit him. And I'll put a date on there. But so that if anybody wants to say anything, we just tell them, go outside and go talk at the stone there. Because <laughs> I don't care. So you receive the results from what you put pressure on concerning the word. Yes. Those that press in for healing get the miracle. Those that press in to the word of the Lord that comes forth, grab a hold of it and begin to see the manifestation of that coming to pass. This is still in effect. So I'm laying the foundation here and we'll carry on next week. Let's do this. Go with me to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 31 and verse 4. He said, moreover, he commanded the people that dwell at Jerusalem to give a portion of the priests and the Levites that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. Now, this is something that the Lord actually dropped upon my spirit several years before we went into nonsense with 2020. I would say around about 2017, we started doing some things. Many of you remember, I believe it was in 2017, I took all the pastors. We took them all to Israel because my wife and I had been there quite a number of times and I felt the Lord say, I want you to pay for your pastors and take them with you to Israel and then bring their children with, because otherwise the children are going to be left out. So that was a big step up for me to even say, okay, let's do that. And so we ended close to, it was just under 100 pastors, you know, because I added some others from other places, and we had a great trip through the land of the Bible, and that was a blessing. Many of the kids still talk about it. And they were, of course, would have been left out, but they got to walk where Jesus walked. And that was, that was probably the first step. And we've always been a blessing to men and women of God. From the time I was a little boy, my parents did that. My mom and dad were always taking care of the men of God. If the evangelist came through town, he looked at the tires, he always went out, I'm gonna buy you new tires. And he always, they went overboard, always. So I always realized to take care of God's servants because they're the ones carrying the message. And they're the ones that have beautiful feet. That it, if it hadn't been that they came to our town, we would never have heard. Those men of God that my parents blessed were people whose lives impacted us. As a little kid, you're watching deaf ears open. You're watching blind eyes open in front of your face. You're sitting there. This is real. It's real stuff. And you can feel the power of God. You're sitting there shaking under the anointing. Six, seven, eight, nine years of age. And I know these people grow up in church. They get calloused and whatever. There's a big difference between what is the anointing and what is the true body of Christ and then what's religion. Religion is a huge out system, broken system that can hold no water. There's nothing. It's a cloud without rain. They speak, but nothing ever comes to pass. 
But what it comes from the mouth of God always brings forth results. And people are saved and healed and set free and delivered. And the power of the enemy is broken. Can you say amen? That's why we hate religion. We love Jesus. We hate religion. We love church. But we don't like religious institutions that block what God wants to do. And that all starts with the leadership. But you can't blanket everybody and say they're all the same. They are not all the same. There is a difference. Are you with me? And while there are bad doctors, they're good doctors. While there's bad lawyers, there are some good lawyers. We've got one here on the front row. Okay. While there are bad businessmen, there are good business people. So not everything's bad. And you can become callous to where you just paint everybody with the same brush. And you're going to miss out on what God wants to do. Surely you have enough discernment like an old cow where you can eat the hay and leave the sticks. Are you with me? And then also to realize it's not your job and responsibility to run around and try to help everybody eat the hay and leave out the sticks, especially when that's not even your realm. I'm I'm a cattle rancher. There ain't no cowboys coming by to walk on my land to come talk to my cows and come to tell me what to, I'll shoot you. Listen, (laughs) you'll get a bullet in your buttocks. And I might brand you with one of the brands that we branded the cattle with. No, this is not your ranch. Hello. I think that's one of the problems we have in the ministry. People think because they're in the ministry, they have an authority to go around and you shut your trap. Go watch the Western movies when they rode into town and shot off at the mouse. You didn't last long. It was a shootout. Are you with me? And they buried it. The cowboy. He run his mouth. You got to know what your realm is. Amen. Amen. So anyway, you can't blanket everybody. Watch I'm just so tired of the church. Oh, you really are. Come, let's see. What, I'm going to come listen to you. After listening to you preach, I think I'll get a gun and shoot myself. And I'm not suicidal. (laughs) Why am I saying all this? Because whatever you place a demand on in your life is what you're going to see. It's very hard for you to receive a miracle when you need one if you don't believe in miracles. I don't believe in miracles. Okay, doctors just told you you're going to die. I don't believe in miracles. Okay, well, what do you want us to do? There's nothing we can do for you. Have you been down to the funeral home? Have you talked about what kind of coffin that you want? What would you want? How would you like your funeral conducted? What do you mean? Well, you're going to die. Yeah, but I don't want to die. Well, you don't believe in miracles. Come on. Come on. So we can't help you. So we said, well, I don't believe in prosperity and blessing. And okay, then. What are you moaning about? The house got repossessed. Yeah. They're going to take your coat too. You'll be homeless next. I mean, what are your choices? We either believe the word of God or we don't. And if you believe the word of God, then you lock out every other voice of every other naysayer and gainsayer that would try to talk you out of what God has and block your ears and say, this is what the word of the Lord says, and this is what I'm receiving for myself, for my house, for my family. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, I record before heaven and earth this day, I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life that both you and your seed may live. On this day, the third day of March 2024, you can say, I'm choosing life. I choose life. I don't care what your history is, how bad it's been, what your father did, what your grandfather did, what your great-grandfather did. It is cut off at you from this day. You shall walk in another realm. You're going to walk in another blessing. You're going to see the hand of God come upon your life. 
It doesn't matter if you were raised in poverty. It doesn't matter where you come from, the wrong side of the tracks or another part of town. You either believe the word of God or you don't believe the word of God. You take God at his word and say, yes, I believe. I believe. So this passage hit me because what they determined to do was to encourage the priests. Someone said, why encourage the priests? Because everything was shut down. If you go and have a look, what took place? All the temples were being shut down. There was no more offerings. There was no more sacrifice. There was no more worship. They were discouraged. All because of what the king had done. And I don't have time to get into it right now. We'll talk a little bit about it next week. But Ahaz has shut everything down, shut it all down. And that's what happened in 2020 when everything was shut down, where you couldn't come to church because you would catch the flu. Which, and this is not YouTube, I'm, this is the CDC, just came out with this announcement that they mistreat the flu. I mean, COVID, just like the flu. That just came out this last week from the CDC. I'm not making it up. This is not fake news. The CDC just released a statement to everybody that if you have COVID, just treat it like the flu. (laughs) But we were to shut the church down and not come here to worship God which is what the king had done, shut everything down. There was no more sacrifices. They were worshiping false gods. Somebody said, well, they, people didn't worship false gods in 2020. They worshiped Fauci. <laughs> they worshiped a needle. They worshiped the mosque. They worship six foot separation. They worship lock yourself in your house. You were never supposed to lock yourself away in your house, ever. Hello. All these things that were perpetrated upon humanity and then churches closed the door. What pastor in his right mind agrees with that? Well, I tell you, we just need to close. You know how bad it is, especially in the relationship to what we're doing here at the river when we have people coming with incurable diseases for the healing school, which has been going for many, many years now. So a person comes to stage four cancer. Uh, you know, I'm so sorry, I know. Yeah, the doctors give me 12, 12 days to live. Uh, well, <clears throat> we can't have you come. There's the flu. I mean, there's the, the other stuff. Try to work that out, how that even fits within the DNA of what we do around here. Especially when I come from Africa and we go to villages where there's Ebola, yellow fever, tuberculosis, flesh-eating disease. We grab, we grab a hold of pray for people with, with flesh-eating diseases. We grab their hands. I'm not exaggerating. Somebody said, these are lepers. Come here. We pray for them. I prayed for a man one night. I put my finger in. It's terrible what I'm about to tell you. In his ear, he was deaf. And his ear exploded like a yellow pus came all over my finger. Somebody said, well, what did you do? Well, it was out of his body. So I just wiped it on his jacket. I mean, what do you want me to do with it? Yeah. So I just wiped it on his jacket and kept praying. I didn't excuse myself, please, I need to go wash my hands, somebody bring me something, get some, some, you know, to sanitize this thing, I don't want to be infected. You don't know, you walk in a place, start shaking hands with people, you don't know where them hands have been, you have no clue. That hand that you shook, the finger was right, you know, you have no clue, you have no clue. Somebody said, why was he doing that? Changing his mind manually. (laughs) 
So, I mean, if we're going to worry about germs, you wouldn't even leave, you wouldn't go anywhere. You'd live in a bubble. Who knows what's the dirtiest thing in any hotel you go to? Huh? Yeah. The remote control. Because the same hand that changes to change the channel, I'll leave it. <laughs> Sitting there scratching his behind, you know. Look, I don't mean to get graphic about it, but if you're gonna if you're gonna get to a place where you allow fear, you won't do anything. And why, what did this all stem from? People are going to die. Yeah. Well, I've got news for everybody in this room. You will die. <laughs> You're going to die. Don't shake your head at me. <laughs> I'll see you up there. <laughs> but you're not dying today. <laughs> but every person under the sound of my voice will die. Yep. But not today. So what do we do till we die? We live yeah. till we die. Amen. Are there risks? Yeah. Are there risks? Yeah. yeah. Flying down a straightaway at 134 miles an hour is a risk. But you count the cost. And it's great. Can you say amen? <laughs> So I'm not telling you to go out of here and do some dumb thing because your pastor said there's a risk and so I just need to do it. I never said that. <laughs> Each person needs to stay in the framework of what the Lord has for your life and the grace that's upon your life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So anyway, to encourage those in the ministry, which is what I started doing 2017, 18, 19, then 2020, really big time because there were ministers that were just totally discouraged. We'd be on the phone with them, talking to them, and the Lord said, send them a gift. And we sent them a gift, and said, send that one a gift, send this one a gift, help that pastor over there, help this pastor over there, help that ministry over there, especially with traveling ministries. Their ministry is shut down. Nobody wants them to come preach. So then I would send checks every month to all the traveling ministries. Because they, they, how's it going? Uh, pastor, I mean, churches don't even want us to come. So I said, well, just stick around. It's going to be okay. You're going to come through it. And I just found myself for hours a day encouraging men and women of God who felt, what? It's the end now? We're not going to do anything? I said, oh, no, you're going to do more than you've ever done before. You're going to come out of this thing stronger. You're going to come out stronger than before. And we told the whole church that. And I can tell you that for a fact. When I'm looking around here at individuals that I can tell you have come out stronger than before. Who here by the uplift of their hands say, Pastor, I'm much stronger than I was in 2020 ever in my life. Yeah, you've been toughened up. You, you've got Teflon. Um, against all the lies of the enemy. And you're not ever going to back down. You're going to accomplish what the Lord has for you, for your life, for your family, for your business, for your church. Can you say amen? amen. So they begin to encourage the priests, which I want to just say this. Pray for those in authority. Pray for the pastors. Pray for the leaders. It's easy to criticize. But pray. You can come around somebody and say, well, I'm looking for something I can find fault. Yeah, you'll find that everybody's just normal. Normal people. So if you're looking for something, you'll probably find it. But pray for those in authority and leadership. Amen? Now look at this. As soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance. So the moment they announced it, the people grabbed a hold of it. And it says here, they brought in abundance of first fruits of corn, wine, oil, honey, of all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things they brought in abundantly. Now, the moment I mentioned that, 
then people immediately, not here, but in general circum, uh, circles here in the church in America, the moment you mention they brought in the tithe, the money, they go, okay, there it is, it's all about the tithe. But what they miss in the scripture is you can't bring in something abundantly if you're not blessed abundantly. So it's not, it's not about, people would look at the, the, the tithe, oh, there they go, they want the tithe. No, you, you're missing the scripture. It says here, they brought of the increase. Who was giving the increase? God was giving the increase. They brought the increase of the field of tithe of all things they brought in abundantly. You cannot bring in abundantly if you're not blessed abundantly. So what people are missing in the passage of scripture was the moment they responded to the word of the Lord, that's when the blessing came abundantly. So that blessing is available for every single person that responds to the word of the Lord. Because somebody said, well, I came here at that time, time and I heard about heaps and I didn't, I've just had a heap of trouble. Everywhere I've gone, I've had a heap. I had a heap of trouble from my mother-in-law and then my wife and my dog, and they go on and on. But they didn't respond to what God's word was saying here. Because it said as soon as the commandment was, uh, was, was given, somebody said, when's the commandment given? As the message is preached. As the message is preached. You see, if this message is not for you, then who's it for? If you don't personalize the message, how are you going to receive it? If you think I'm talking to the person next to you or behind you, they are the ones who are going to get the blessing and you ain't going to get nothing. Because it's all to do with attitude. When, when the command was given, somebody said, I'm not doing that. Okay. Then why is it that some people are blessed and some people are not? Is it because God favors one over another? No, absolutely not. It has to do with obedience to the word of the Lord and you grabbing a hold of it in faith, putting it in your heart and keeping it before your eyes to see that breakthrough. Now look at this. This sparked the children of Israel to now start doing something. That concerning the children of Israel and Judah, that dwell in the cities of Judah, they brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord, and they brought them by heaps. Now, to understand what a heap is, is it's one thing piled on top of another. Are you with me? So if you have one chair... That's just one. If you have two chairs and you stack it on top, if you have 10 chairs, that would say that's a heap of chairs. Yeah. Are you with me? Amen. The more it multiplies, the more you can say, I don't know what to do. There's heaps everywhere. Yeah, the more cattle you get, the more heaps you get. <laughs> I try to get something you relate to. Somebody said, I don't want all these heaps around you. All right, cut down your cattle, get two. <clears throat> two cows, less heaps. How many grab what I'm saying here? Huh? Where there's no ox, the stall is clean. Somebody said, you have a beautiful barn. Yeah, nothing there. Spick and span. A working barn, you can smell it before you get there. Are you with me? I was talking to my son-in-law, Caleb, who was raised as a cattle rancher. He told me, Dad, there's something special about dung. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, son, what do you mean? He said, when I get amongst the smell, it takes me all the way back to my childhood and through everything and the whole cattle operation, just everything. He said that smelled, even though some people don't like it, it just awakens me all kinds of things. I start thinking of biscuits and gravy. I start thinking of <laughs> just all the stuff that my mother, my, my dad used to do that it takes him right back. So 
So they brought in abundance and laid them by heaps. How is it possible that we could do everything we've done in the last three years, from March 2020 until now, if it wasn't for the fact that the heaps were in effect? And I heard the Lord say, tell them it's still in effect. Now, listen to me. If you grab it this month, Raponde Icasto Profandele Sungra. If you grab a hold of what I'm talking about this month, then you watch March and April and May and June and July. Watch what is about to happen. As our dear brother talked about an acceleration, what happened in six months would be what took place in three years. I feel that what he just testified to with his business, get ready for what God's about to do. This is for the River Church. This is for every River member. This is for every minister represented here. This is for every young person down to the, the youngest child to the oldest saint. I've heard reports from uh, family members sending me the child's offering thing and writing what they believe in God for to pay off their parents' house and their car from little kids. Because they grab an hold of it. They exercise in their faith. I mean, your kids are not being given a cracker and orange juice. They're being pushed full of the word of God. And when they bring their little offering to the Lord, they're right, what do you believe in God for? I'm going to pay off my dad's house, pay in the car. Little kid, eight, nine, ten years old. Hello. Why? Because the word. Kids are grabbing a hold of the word of the Lord. Kids are grabbing a hold of the word of the Lord. Somebody said, I'm too old for this. Don't even get me started. So in the third month, which is March, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finished in the seventh month. That means that the heaps are perpetual. They keep coming in and we lay the foundation March. Then April, there's more. Then May, there's more. Then June, there's more. Then July, the foundation is laid. Somebody said, The foundation for what, Pastor? For the next phase, for the next level, for what God wants to do in and through every one of your lives. This is not just about us. This is about every single person here. What are you believing God for? What are you trusting him for? What are you asking him for? Who's got some big things in your spirit that you feel that the Lord is going to do? Then it shall be according to the word of the Lord. And according to your faith, it will be, there will be that acceleration and you'll see the hand of God upon your life. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, so great is this increase in blessing that it actually will shock people. So I want to just ask you, because I mean, people come around you, they walk around you and their eyes are big and they just look at me and shake their head. How many have had people look at you that knew you for a long time and they just shake their head because they don't understand all of what's happening with you? Wave your hand, wave your hand. Okay, so they already see that. Now you could stay at that level or you could say it's time to go higher. You could say, you know, all oh, that's wonderful, but God can't keep doing this. I mean, God's going to run out of things. Yeah, he just can't keep carrying on. Oh, really? Who are you listening to? When I open the word, I can't, go, I can't open to this passage and go, you know, well, we did that in 2021. <laughs> if I can open up any part of the scripture, and it's the same today, as it was then, then I can open up this. And I heard the Lord say, tell him it's still in effect. If you'll grab a hold of it in the month of March, if you'll grab a hold of it. Mm. If you'll grab a hold of it. If you'll grab a hold of it. If you'll grab a hold of it. Somebody said that would be selfish for me to grab. You need to, you need to, you need to say, bless God. 
if I'm the only one here at the river on this Sunday, the third day of March, that's going to grab a hold of it, I'm grabbing a hold of it. I'm grabbing a hold of it. Because so great shall be the acceleration that God will accelerate you in your business, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your home, in your children, in your finances, in your walk, in your talk, everything that you put your hand to. Everything you touch. While what the world touches comes to nothing. What you touch shall flourish. Man, I feel this so strong here. If you don't want to have heaps, don't come back in March. Hide away. So Hezekiah and the princess came and saw the heaps. And all you can do is bless the Lord. All you can do is just throw your hands up and go. I have an evangelist flying from another country for one reason, everybody said, you have to go there. You have to go to the river. If you go, it'll expand your whole vision. It'll just break you into another realm. I was talking to them on the phone, and they just said, I have to. I have to come. So you bless the Lord. But privately, Hezekiah, Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the Ebes. In other words, what in, so this is how you question What in the world is going on here? How did all this happen? Bless the Lord. We bless his name. He's done great things. What in the world is happening here? Now look what Azariah did. Azariah. Man, this is so awesome. I'm so happy. Ah. I had to do it. I'm sorry. I, and, and, it, ah, and again. And one more time. Ah. And as arrived, the chief priest of the house of Zadok answered... Listen to what he said. Since the people, everybody say, since the people, people. began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord. So, So he's trying to find out why this is happening. He said, well, since they started. Do you you understand? This is being initiated. Obviously, God is blessing his people, but the people are responding. It's not a one-sided thing. You, you cannot outgive God. You can't. So that means every single day you're about your father's business because everybody has to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. Are you with me? And God's raising up people that are going to fund the end time harvest. You know, God spoke to me, believe him for 300 multi-millionaires that he was raising up to fund the end time harvest. I believe we have a whole bunch of them here. Are you with me? And some that will be billionaires. And I'm not talking about people that are going to lose their minds and go to lost eternity. I'm talking about people that are going to stay true to God, but are going to be used of God to be end time financiers of this great end time harvest. That churches are going to be built, paid for cash. That ministries are going to be launched, paid for cash. That people are going to be coming and going. Whatever is needed is going to be there in an abundant supply. And you've heard me say this over the years, the day will come when people will come in to get their financial needs met. Now, just so you know, I can't house all the homeless people, so that's, that's not going to work. I can help people temporarily, but you have to get a job. Yeah. Are you with me? But I'm not the U.S. government. <laughs> and we can't do that, but we can show you how to break through. If you listen, we'll help you. If you don't, we can help you because we're not going to help. We're not going to take resources that should be used for the kingdom and waste it on people that just are lazy and don't want to do anything right. or know better than what we are telling them. Then you must go down to the first church of the Frigidaire or better go to Mexico, cross the border through California, and they're giving home loans for Im- illegal immigrants. So you're going to get a home loan for a nice house in California. Just do that. 
At least you'll be blessed through the U.S. government. But don't come here and waste our time. All right. So, sin, everybody say, since the people, since the people. begin to bring the offerings to the house of the Lord, we have enough to eat and lift plenty for the Lord has, for the Lord, for the Lord has blessed his people. For the Lord, for the Lord has blessed his people. For the Lord has blessed his people. For the Lord has blessed his people. And that which is left is this great store. Yes, sir. Wow. That's good, sir. He said that he would open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there is no room to receive it. That the Lord has the right house for you. Paid for. No debt. God has the right vehicle for you. Paid for. No debt. No strain. With monthly payments. I'll talk a little bit about this next week. I mean, when you look at people in the world and just going to some of the circles, these people with so much money, they don't even know what to do with it. The money they waste every month. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Half a million, million bucks of spending money. They don't think anything of it. And you might have heard me tell the story. Years ago, Back in the 90s, I was preaching in West Palm Beach. And uh, I'm a friend of the Player family, Gary Player's family, his son, I know well, daughter, and, that, and I met Gary, who's one of the top golfers in the world. He's now in his late 80s. And um, there was a special event being put on at Wayne Engel's private golf course, which I think only had like 200 members. They, you know, a lot of the guys tried to join Augusta, but because they weren't allowed to, they just built their own course. And they're beautiful. I mean, just like, when you look at it, you wonder where are you? It's like the way everything's done, it's just like next level. So um, I was invited to go to this auction. It was like a silent auction. Gary was raising money for a school that he had in Southern Africa, and he put a lot of his memorabilia up, and people were bidding in it, like what's called a, a blind auction, and then you'd only know later who would end up getting it. And um, just many things, when he won the Masters, signed things, golf clubs, tro you know, all kinds of things. And uh, so I arrived, and the guy that, when he heard about it, the businessman said, listen, he said, can you talk to Gary Player and, and get this, I've got a property in the Turks and Caicos, and he said, I want to build a golf course there, and if you get him to do the golf course, I'll give you an acre of property at this big yacht base. And now, this is back in the 90s. I know nothing about this stuff. All I've done is two meetings a day, six days a week. I, I didn't even know about this room. I didn't even know it kind of existed. I knew it was out there, but I didn't. How am I going to ever cross the path of that? So he said, do you mind talking to him? Here's the plans of the thing. He rolled it out. He said, take my BMW, the big one, the 745i or whatever, and he put it in the trunk of the car. He said, just go and see if you can get it. I'll give you an acre at this big deep water yacht, uh, yacht club we're going to build there. So I thought, man, I get to be a mogul for an uh, for a afternoon evening. You know? <laughs> I'm going to become a, a tycoon. You know? So I drive. I get to the place. I walk in. And as I walk in, I mean, everybody who's who's who in the financial zoo is there. I mean, Steve Forbes. I mean, everybody's coming in. I walk there. There goes um, the guy that wrote Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. You know, whatever his name was. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Anyway, he walks by me. I was like, I thought it was in a movie. And helicopters were landing and people are all coming in there. And I'm standing there thinking, oh, my God, this is... This is crazy. I shouldn't be here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how to talk. How do you even talk to the people? What do you even speak about? And so I get into where 
Gary was, and there was a big grand piano, and I took the thing and rolled it out, and I showed Gary. I said, listen, he's developing this golf course. He said, he asked me if you would consider with your organization to build this golf course. So he took out his business card. He said, call, let him call the head of my um, design company, and we will consider it. So I thought, wow, that was quick. That was easy. So I rolled it up. And I'm, I thought I'm going to go put it in the car because I want to carry walk around with that thing the whole day. So I go out, I pop the trunk, I put it into the trunk, and a guy comes running, he's out of breath. He walks up to me and he's out of breath. He goes, hey, 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 did you sign a deal with Gary for that golf course? I said, no, what are you talking about? He said, I put this whole event on here. He said, I have $200 million to invest in golf courses. I'd like, can you consider us? I, I said, yeah, sure, thank you. I took that. <laughs> so I think... So now I'm like, I go, what just happened here? I got two possibilities here. I'm like negotiating golf courses and whatever, you know. So um, anyway, I went back inside. And I'm looking at all of the stuff that's going on there. And people are buying. They're buying stuff for 30K and then giving the money to Gary and just giving it back. So look, we don't want them. We just want to support you. And they were giving. I actually put my dark glasses on because I started weeping because I saw more giving happening amongst sinners. This is back in the 90s than I saw in the world. I mean, I saw amongst sinners than I saw in the church. And it rocked me. And they're all, one, one guy, they introduced me to him, he was 35 years old. He had just bought ITT Sheraton, the hotel chain, for $10 billion. They said, come meet this guy, he just bought ITT Sheraton for $10 billion. And I'm standing there looking at him, I don't even know what $10 billion looks like. What? He bought it for $10 billion. Yeah, he bought it for $10 billion. So I'm standing there, I'm, I'm like, I'm, what am I doing here? And I saw them blessing each other and giving to each other. And even though there's competition, they were like, you know, this is what we do. And I heard the Lord say, these people are living my people's inheritance. They're living my people's inheritance. I walked from that place, rocked. I didn't realize that the Lord would begin to do some things in our life to even lead us into some of these realms, and even the realms that we're pushing into now, in the realms of government, in the realms of business, that, that you have to change your whole way of thinking. If you're going to step into that, you have to change your way of thinking. You can't think small. You, can, you can't keep talking about where you came from. You only should be a testimony because you limit yourself into that place. Are you with me? Well, this is the boundary. That's the level. When, when, when the kids were small, we lived in a development. Of course, the thing exploded now, but we were like, there was only seven houses and then we, were, we were the seventh house. And uh, then they started building this back in 93. Well, there was no fence on the, on the deal. So we, we get two... We, was it three dogs? We got a German shepherd. We had an Australian, what, no, a German, um, I mean the, uh, the big dog, St. Bernard. Well, St. Bernard. And then it was an Australian sheepdog. sheepdog. And a brown lab. A brown lab, okay. So now, so you put, we find out they've got electric fence for dogs. You put the collar on the thing and the dog won't go past it. But there were two of the dogs. They didn't care anything about the electric fence. <laughs> They, they, they didn't care about the electric fence. Well, if you go there, you're going to get shocked. They went right through the fence. We, I realized that the electric fence didn't work. With, with, with an electric fence, you can set the parameter. Are you with me? In actual fact, when I was over at the Cattle Con in Orlando, they, they showed me how they're doing all these digital things where you could put a uh, a whole GPS thing on a cow and if he tries to go further he gets shocked and he moves back they can actually corral them it's a geofence so this is all the latest way they do with farms 
So it costs you like several thousand dollars to put this thing. It looks like a clock around the, sh the cow's neck. And as he's moving, if he wants to go in the wrong direction, it, it moves him back. It just backs him up. Just all done by electronics. I thought, boy, it'd be great if we did that for church. <laughs> <laughs> we put some around them Sunday morning. <clears throat> and it, it gets them all to church, you know what I mean? <laughs> but... They told me that one of them was developed in the big cattle ranches of Australia because they're so big. He said, we can find a bull and we can bring him back where it'll take the farmer several days. We can bring that bull back by geofencing. We can bring, move him right back into where he's supposed to be. So you begin to look when you travel the world, you see there's certain nations but there's a certain level that they go to. They can't break through because they've been told that's, where, that's how you fit in. That's, that's where you fit in. You'll never make it. You, you grew up in the inner city. You'll stay in the inner city. Who said that? God will take you from the prison to the palace. God will transform your life and change you. If God can bring me from Africa, take me to 92 countries of the world, what is he going to do for you? If you believe. Yeah. Now, but Pastor, you don't understand my family history. It's because of your family history that I'm trying to tell you what the Word of God says. Amen. That you break through that barrier. Yeah. Amen. You know, the first four-minute mile took years and years and years to do. But since then, everybody breaks it. So it's that whole barrier, that parameter. You can't push it. You, you can't break it. Some said, so why do you race? I, I, want, to, I want to get better. I want to see the numbers drop. Why are you going fishing? I'm looking for the big fish. Why do you do anything? Is this helping anybody here? So what will hinder you is the limitations of your own mind. Yeah. And the words of people around you that tell you you'll never amount to anything. Which that's what I heard my whole beginning of ministry. You'll never, you'll never do anything. You'll never go anywhere. And I just, we actually started laughing about it. We thought it was funny. We still laugh about it. We still... People still send us criticisms and all kinds of things. We just look at it and laugh. My wife posted on her Instagram about he who finds a wife finds a good thing. It's scripture. You can, she said, I cannot believe the people that have gone crazy on me just because of the scripture. One guy said, well, I'm too old anyway to find a wife now, so what does that even mean to me? I mean... And, <laughs> And then they go, let a woman be sound in the church. Woman should not be preaching. It's a woman's conference, you dumb bunny. <laughs> so we, she reads the stuff to me. And we just laugh. I, I think it's hilarious. I think she was wearing a beautiful floral dress. Somebody goes, he who finds a floral dress finds a curtain or finds a, a tablecloth. My wife just laughs at it because it doesn't really mean anything. Listen to me carefully. If you're going to listen to what other people say, you will never do what God's called you to do. You only want to listen to what the Word of God says. This blessing is not just for one or two or three. This blessing is for every single person. But you have to break down. Some are sitting with barriers and hedges you put on yourself. You have placed those barriers on yourself. That's why you keep pushing up against the ceiling. If you humble yourself this month, it shall be the beginning of the month of heaps for you and March and April and May and June and July. By the end of July, when the clock strikes midnight, on the last day of July this year, 
you will be in a whole different realm in everything that you're doing. Hallelujah. For those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. You shall mount up on eagles' wings and accomplish heaven's plan and heaven's purpose for your life. And there's not a devil in hell that can stop you. I don't care what they're planning behind closed doors. There's many things I could talk to you about. You can watch the news program today, but I didn't come to bring that to you today. I'm here to tell you what the word of the Lord is. God wants you to know this is in effect. It's still in effect. It has not changed. If it was good in 21, then it is good today. There are men and women here that are nation shakers. There are individuals here God's going to use in a powerful way, not just in the business realm, but in other realms as well. There are people here that God will use you to write history. The barrier will always be there. But you'll prevail. I said you'll prevail. Hallelujah. One of the things that I want to bring to your attention, and we'll carry on with this next week, but the blessing came in obedience because they had been blessed abundantly. But as they do what the Lord says, it sparks it in other people. Whereas people would maybe just look at me, oh, that's Pastor Rodney, so whatever. But as they begin to see you blessed, they go, what? I see Pastor Rodney got blessed over here, but if he's going to do it, look, he's doing it for them. It sparks, it sparks the blessing in other people. Because of you, this is the reason every one of you have to be blessed. Because as you are blessed, it sparks the blessing in others. It's going to turn your family members around. Even unsaved loved ones are going to come in because they will see the hand of God upon you. And it starts today. It starts here. And it runs through July. The five months of laying into the seventh month, laying the foundation, March, April, May, June, July. Amen. You know, I don't, I don't run out of things to preach. It's not like, oh, let me see if I can pull something out of the past. I mean, it hit me like a sledgehammer. And the Lord said, I want you to push this now. He said, last time, all you did was teach the offering, receive the offering, you preached on something else. But he said, I want you to make this the theme of March. Because there are people here that are believing for big, big, big things. And I understand we can be criticized for it, whatever, again, you. I don't care what you say. And if you have any thoughts, you can leave it at the tombstone out to the front of the building. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but we have an assignment. And this is not just about what God's called us to do. It's about what God's called every single one of you to do. Can you say amen? Every one of you. I did that on purpose. You know that I did that. I knew you were going to react like that. Big things. So that's what I see in my spirit about the next five months. Because before you know it will be here. 
Well, I'm just looking at the calendar. I mean, a month from now, leave for Africa. Get back, then it's graduation. Then it's summer school. Then it's, <laughs> then it's London. It's already here. It's there. It'd be like that. Somebody said, well, Pastor, you're pushing me. Yes, I am pushing you. And you shall be very happy. Some of you, I might have to prod you. I didn't say kick you. I said prod you. Sometimes when they don't want to move, you have to use the prod. Somebody said, what's happening right now? Are you being prodded? <laughs> Ten foot angel, right by your chair. I break off every hedge of limitation off of God's people here today. In the name of Jesus, I break it off of you. And I speak a release over your life. Hearts open to receive all that heaven has. Minds that will stop speaking about how impossible it is to do anything. But they will say all things are possible to him that believeth. And so, Father, we receive your word here today. And we receive the increase and we receive the multiplication. And we cause this to come into effect as of this morning here on the third day of month of March 2024. And the acceleration throughout this month shall be, and then into April, and then into May, and then into June, and into July. We thank you. We thank you for it. Just like the very first time when this hit us. So do it again. You told me, you said put pressure on my word. You put pressure on my word, son. Tell the people to put pressure on my word. My word shall carry them. My word shall cause it to come to pass. And they shall be happy and blessed. They shall be happy and blessed. They shall be happy and blessed. And they shall be made a blessing unto many. And the blessing that comes upon your life will flow to everyone round about you, to your neighbors, to your neighborhood, your business, to all your staff, your ministry that God has entrusted to you. And people will say, truly, the hand of the Lord is upon you. The favor of God rests upon you. And the open doors that no man can shut. And you shall rejoice and shall be exceedingly glad and shall be happy. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and thank him for that right now. Thank you for that, thank you for that. Thank you for that, thank you for that. 
Gracias, gracias, Señor. Gracias. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your abundant grace. That's it right now. That's the abundant grace just coming upon God's people. Thank you for that abundant grace. Thank you for that abundant grace. Thank you for that abundant grace. The abundant grace upon every face in this place to run the race. Get saturated in it. Get saturated in it. You cannot bless others when you not bless yourself. Freely you have received, freely you give. And for some, you know, they'll say, well, this is all about money. It's not. It's about extreme blessing. And just so you know, we're not out there looking for money. Money's out looking for bus. We're not out there looking for blessing. I'm not out there looking for blessing. Blessing's out looking for me. You grab this today. Yes. Let me ask you how many of you've heard it before, but it's like fresh to you again. Keep it that way. Keep it that way. And we turn up the heat on this heat. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here we are. We're prodding people right now. I've got angels all around prodding people right now. Some of you are being prodded right in your seats. You don't understand that. Somebody said, Pastor, what's happening? There's heaps of joy. There's heaps of joy here in this room. Let's do this right now and now continue with this next Sunday morning. Because next Sunday morning I'm going to talk about heaps and I'm going to talk about the blessing. Heaps of blessings. Blessing. What does that actually mean? A lot of people don't have no clue. 
Let's give everybody the opportunity to worship God with your giving today. Service is not over. It's not like we're going to be long. I have to leave. But after this, I give a call and then we'll have communion. I want the ushers to come out of the offering envelopes. <clears throat> Let's pray. Ask God what he would have you do and be obedient to obey the Holy Ghost. I believe this offering will set the tone for the month of March and will set the tone for the five months. So do this prayerfully. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then be obedient to obey the Holy Ghost. Pastor Eric will come give instruction for everybody watching by way of television. Do exactly what God tells you to do. And obey the Lord today. Hallelujah. Well, of course, the envelopes are coming down the row. Make your checks out to the river. You can also give by credit card electronically if you choose. And then for everybody around the world, if you look at whatever way you're watching what's the screen, you'll see many different ways to sow seed. Ask the Lord what he'd have you do in this foundation for the heaps here. Do what he tells you to do. Go to revival.com. Click invest now, revival.com. Click invest now at the top right. Or the direct link is revival.com forward slash giving or revival.com forward slash PayPal. Those are different ways to sow seed, especially all around the world. And then you can actually give through your cell phone, uh, which is text message or push pay giving. And you'll see once again on the screen, text 77977, give river. Text 77977 and all together, give river. And you can sow seed right through your cell phone. And then also we have cash app, which is dollar sign revival ministries. You'll see there's an S on the end of it. It's plural revival ministries. And it's a blue logo. And then on that app, make sure you put under the notes your first and last name, your ministry name, or your business name. And please do that. And that's right under cash app. And then you can mail a love gift in. Maybe the Lord's speaking to you about sending a check in, or you'd like to send checks in, or you want to lose something and send it in. You can send it in to the River Church or to Revival Ministries International, P.O. Box 292 888 Tampa, Florida, 33687. The address is right up there. And then remember, there's a drop-down box for different things like Africa and London and this whole week in six different cities, one night Holy Ghost and fire meetings. We, we spent around 30,000 roughly on a one night. Of course, Africa and London, all that's a whole different thing on a, on a one night Holy Ghost and fire meeting and the building fund and all the other things are on the drop-down boxes if you're doing that electronically. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. If we missed you with an envelope, raise your hand. We'll make sure we get you one in the balcony. Or if we missed you anywhere else, put your hands up and we'll get one to you. And then once again, if you're watching online, follow all the directions. Or if you're watching on satellite television, all the different ways that we, we go across the world. And then if you're watching on the rebroadcast, do what the Lord is telling you to do. And then as we give you just a couple more minutes, we always put up the church will. We have an opportunity for those that we've uh, to create their own free will or their own free trust. And uh, but if you would like to leave a bequest or if you would like to uh, leave something for the ministry, in uh, you can give a legacy gift if you'd like. You give you this opportunity to get a free will or a free trust that we pay for that we take care of, and we'll just put that up for a few minutes and then turn back to the other slide. Just say this often. You say, Father, today I bring up my giving of my tithes and my offerings. What I give to you today, I give you from your own hand because everything I have is yours and you've entrusted this to me. And as I sow today, I sow in faith, believing just as this became a reality in 2021, cause it to be afresh, cause it to be anew in my life in 2024. And for the month of March to be the beginning of laying the foundation of the heaps. I'm expecting it. I expect Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, 
for blessings to flow. Blessings are on its way right now to my house. Angels are working, bringing in supernatural provision. The ravens are coming. Everything that I need and more to have abundant supply and build a great store is mine. And I receive it now. I receive it by faith. Thank you for your word. It's not my word, but it is your word. And I receive this now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and just thank the Lord right now. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I need to say this. How many of you, you feel the anointing coming on you right now? Okay. All right. So under the old covenant, when they anointed, they poured oil on people. So obviously, somebody's well, nobody's pouring oil on me. Actual fact, there's oil being poured on you right now. What do you mean? I feel it. So I'm the only one feeling oil being poured upon them right now. So oil's being poured upon you. That's a sign of blessing. That oil is the fragrance. And that's the sign of blessing. So that you can go and hand it off to other people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 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 There's oil being poured all over this room. Maybe you're one of the members. You only need to come once every six months because you can't handle the oil. It's just too much oil. You're looking for some vinegar. Pastor, there's too much oil. Blessing. Amen. 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 Glory a Dios. Praise God. Now, Lord, multiply this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Ashes, go ahead. and west and every place between come on in and multiply to a lovely shade of green good measure pressed down shaking together running over so i can sow good seed to reach the greatest harvest of souls the church has ever seen oh come on in Cause this is not a gimmick You've come to 
to have the wherewithal to get the jobs done. But you're limited to how much you can do if you are short on funds. Now I may give with a righteous money. Watch me and you'll see that I'm not out there looking for money. Money's out looking for me. Oh, come, money. Come down, money. I hear the clap, clap, clapping of the raven's wings. Bring the silver. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want everybody just to bow your heads, if you would, please. You know, everything begins with a heart and surrender. When you come to that place where you say, Lord, I've tried everything. I've gone my own way, but it hasn't helped. But today, I surrender. Maybe you're here on the property today and you fit in any one of these categories. I'd love to pray with you and for you. What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And you don't have to go to devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid, the blood was shed. And just like the old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood, lose all the guilty stain. Today, the power of sin will be broken. The power of guilt and shame will be removed from your life. You might have come one way and leave another way. I know there's people that would watch and say, well, you should have done this up front. It's not your church. This is not the only time we win souls. We win souls every moment of the day. If all we did was give an altar call Sunday morning, we might as well close the house. More people are being saved every weekend in Central Florida because the people are winning souls. Amen. Some mega churches boast of 200 salvations in one year. We've got kids that do more than that. <laughs> we have 10 year old kids that are mega churches in themselves. Amen. But if there be any here today that don't know Jesus, we'd like to give you that opportunity. And then for the benefit of those watching by way of television. You clicked through and thought this was something strange, so you kept watching, but the Lord has you there riveted in your seat, in your house, on the Sunday morning as we're live, millions of homes around the world. 
The Bible tells us what is your life. It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. In the long line of eternity, human existence is like a blip on the screen. And today you can say, yes, Lord, I surrender to you. He loves you. He stands with arms wide open. One of the things that became so evident to me in 2020, that early hours of the morning of the open vision, was how much he loved people. At the moment you realize that, you could feel that love that reaches and transcends everything. It's a lost and dying world that he's calling right now. Yeah, judgment's coming, but not right now. This is the game plan goes down for the ark is open. The flood is coming, but not yet. The ark is built. His name is Jesus. And today you can surrender by telling him, yes, I surrender. I make a decision. What would happen if this day your life was required of you? Where would you go? Today, eternal life can be yours by making that decision to say, yes, Lord. Maybe you hear, you say, Pastor, I gave my life to the Lord in days gone by, but men have allowed things in. I'm not doing what I should. I'm not serving God like I should. Maybe it's hidden things that nobody knows. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, hidden things that clog the heart of man. But today you want to be free from that. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. Will you let him do that? Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's something outward that all can see, which makes it even worse. You try to hide it, but it doesn't matter. Everybody knows. But today you say, you know, forget all that. I'm coming back. I'm going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. I'm going to get my first love back. Maybe you're in this room today, you say, Pastor, a storm has come against my life. I was going along doing great. This thing hit me like a Mack truck from hell. A sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world, knocked your breath out of you, took the wind out of your sails. But you say, today, I feel the Lord calling me. I'm coming back. And then lastly, you're in this place, you say, Pastor, I love the Lord. That's not even a question. But I don't have the assurance that I'm a child of God. And I want to have that assurance today. I want to know that I know that I know that I'm a child of God. If you fit in any one of these categories, remember, God doesn't look on the outside. He looks on the heart. And we either have one or three temperatures, hot, lukewarm, or cold. This is not the hour to be lukewarm. And definitely not an hour to be cold. This is an hour to be on fire for Jesus. If this is you and you fit into any one of these categories, I want to pray with you and for you right where you are. Quickly just put your hand up. Say, pray for me right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the balcony, yes, yes, yes. On the main floor, thank you, yes. Hands are going up all across this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can put your hands down now. I want you to look at me, please. Over here in this section, under the, the north balcony, if you didn't raise your hand but want to be included, just quickly slip the hand up and say, include me in the prayer. Anyone else? Up on the north balcony, just slip your hand up and say, that's me. Anybody else? Over here, on the floor, in the middle section here, under the west balcony, you didn't raise your hand but want to be included. Thank you. In the balcony itself, just put your hand up. Anybody else? Then here, under the south balcony on the floor here, quickly slip your hand up. I've seen your hand already. Thank you. And then up in the south balcony, slip your hand up. Thank you. I'm going to ask every person that raise your hand, if you would stand your feet all across the room, please. Stand your feet. 
We're going to pray together. I want you to come from where you are and come stand right here. Come from the balcony. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. The ushers will help you down. Come stand right here. Today's your day of victory. Today's your day of freedom. Come on, look at this today, today, come on. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me. world behind me. We're waiting for you from the balcony. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. You can take the whole world. But give me Jesus. You can take the whole world. But give me Jesus. You can take the whole world. Give me Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I want you to look at me right now. We're going to pray one simple prayer. One simple prayer fits all. If you mean business with God, God means business with you. I've had the privilege of doing this in 92 countries. This is my 44th year. Now listen to me carefully. People come to me and they say, they even remember the here, they remember the altar where they pray just like you're going to pray. And what the Lord has done in their life subsequently. So if God can do it for them, he do it for you. And we're going to pray right now. So I want you just to close your eyes, raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And pray this after me. Believe it in your heart. Say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you. In the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord. 
and my Savior. And right now, by faith, in the finished work of the cross, and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm saved. I'm born again. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Now lift those hands right now. Father, I just thank you. Every effect of sin is broken off of their life. I break every curse. I break every witchcraft worked against them. Any addictions, any bondages, any drugs, alcohol. I break it. I break it off of you right now. I break it off of you. I break it in Jesus' name. From this day, you'll never be the same. 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 Now flood them with your peace. Flood them with your joy, Lord. Put that anointing on them. And use them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Now, if you, if you love a scholarship to River University, we have those for you. Pastor Ryan and Pastor Jason will tell you about that. If you can split down here, like the Red Sea, this half go that way, and this half go that way, we have a gift we want to put in your hands. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. You know, how many were blessed when we had uh, Dr. Rick Renner and his precious wife with us last week. Of course, they did not want to leave. His wife said, I, I've never been in a place like this. She said, I've never seen a church like this. She did not want to go. Now listen, he said to me when we went to lunch, he said, it was so short. <laughs> he said, the service was so short. He said, I looked... I didn't realize how long we'd been in, but it was over like that. He said, wow. Of course, they're going to be back. They will be back. It, it was awesome. He was watching this morning. He texted me. He didn't want to leave. He leant over and he said, I don't know why anybody in their right mind who lived in the area wouldn't come to this church. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll, I'll let you come to the conclusion. I want the ushers to come hand out the uh, communion. I want to pray with uh, JC and Chris Ann, pastors, come please. They headed for Latvia, for Riga. Latvia. And um, not permanently, just one week. They're coming back. Yes, yes, no. Who are you looking for? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so they, they're going for a week. When, you'll be back next week. The 14th. The 14th, okay. And they're very excited about this. This <laughs> trip is going to be huge. How many know that the Lord used this ministry and, and them to help? Stop what the devil was trying to do in Latvia. Five letters that were written to five different departments and said, if you continue in your tyranny, we'll go to the world court in The Hague. They were about to take all the church's property away and we backed them into a corner and they left them alone. Yeah, come right out of this ministry. So they're going there and there's a whole conference they're speaking at. Everything's been put around them. Just join hands. Father, thank you for this precious family. This is only the beginning. <laughs> this is only the beginning of what the Lord's doing. And this, 
I just feel something very big is going to unfold and unfurl when you get there. In Jesus' name. Thank you for that. You bowed them as a wall of fire and arm and evil can come out of them. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. 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 Reach your hand out towards these. Father, these requests that have come in. Families, homes, lives. Grant unto them every single need met, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> I can be normal again. I just have one. Amen. <laughs> I kept finding ones with two and three in. Amen. Thank God for this table. How many thank God for the bread and the cup? Thank God for his supernatural protection for us. And Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely have borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we healed. Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live in the righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Now, Father, we thank you for this bread, representing your body, that as we partake of this, let there be instantaneous healings take place across this congregation. Every muscle, every sinew, every tissue, every cell, down to the very marrow of the bones. Not one here shall die prematurely. Every single one of them shall run their race. And every single one shall hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And we receive this now in Jesus' name as we partake and eat. This is your body that was broken for us. And we thank you for healing to flood every vessel. In Jesus' name. We forgive every person that's ever hurt us. We hold no ill will to them. We forgive and release them. Thank you. Because we know if we forgive, then we forgive it. Thank you for total forgiveness for each person today. And now the cup, this blood. This blood of the new covenant the blood that washes us clean from all sin, from all guilt, from all shame. The blood that cleanses us, the blood that seals us till the day of redemption. The blood that protects us, that no devil can touch us because of the blood. We thank you for this cup. You said as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show your death till you come and you're coming soon. And we thank you for that. But we drink now in faith and we receive it now. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Now lift your hands and just thank him. Just thank him right now. He's hand upon you as you lie on your bed, as you travel in the day by land, sea, or air. His hand upon you, wherever you go, in your work, in your play. Even if you're flying down a road at 124 miles, <laughs> his hand upon you, his hand upon you, his grace upon you, his mercy. Can you say amen? amen. Father, let there be a quickening even in every physical body right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. There's so many things here. Pastor Derek, happy birthday for your birthday today. 
I just, I heard he turned 26. No, 28, 28. McGill and Christie, happy anniversary. 13th anniversary. Yeah. Brandon, she said yes. Stand up. Hold the ring up. Look at that. She said, yeah. When's the big day? Soon. Soon. Okay. Good job. Good job. Amen. Are you happy this morning? How many got blessed today? Pray for us this week, six places. And um, we love you. Everybody stand if you would. We're probably ending a little earlier. <laughs> if you can call it earlier, but we're ending a little earlier. This is going to be a supernatural week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Amen. I'm expecting to hear many testimonies next week when we get back. Praise God. Let's sing a song rejoicing. We love you. is coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. The shout that will come in your nation, 